Hello friends. For today's video, I'm going to be doing the Shades of Magic book tag that my friend Roger created, inspired by our shade along, I'm calling it, our Shades of Magic read along. So Roger came up with this original tag where he's going through the different spells that the characters are able to use, and they have these different words for the spells that when translated mean something very specific, and so Roger was coordinating the meaning of the spells to the various different questions. And so I'm just going to jump right into it. One of the most prominent spells that you get in Shades of Magic due to the fact that you're following characters who can go between parallel worlds would be this first one, Oz Travars, which is to travel between worlds. The question for this prompt is a book or series that transports you to another world. I have three different ones that I think have phenomenal settings, plus the way in which the world is delivered to you I really liked. So the one that has, I think, the world building, just the way it's executed, the pacing of the world building reveals, the details, I just ate it up. I had so much fun with it. And that would be the Bonesmith, or just Bonesmith, excuse me, there's no the. And this is a new release from this year. It's actually pretty new. And I had such a blast with this one. We follow a character who is a Bonesmith, and specifically, she's one of the warriors within Bonesmiths. She does have some abilities associated with bone magic, and then there are other groups of individuals that have magic associated with different substances. So you have some people that are ironsmiths, some people that are goldsmiths, and you're following her as she is essentially on a rescue mission, and the person that she has to ally herself on this rescue mission is somebody who was involved in the kidnapping of the person she is trying to rescue. So it's kind of like enemies that have to work together. There's a very loud plane right now, if you can hear that. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm just gonna keep talking though. So she finds herself having to ally herself with this individual, and it is kind of like enemies to partners in crime, I'll say. And the world building was so cool and the pacing of this was so much fun and part of what made it so fun to turn the page was to discover more about the world because it's not just that some people have this ability with magic, it's how that's tied to the different culture and the different cultures and the different houses and the way they create things and build things and what they do with their magic and how they create armor. And I just thought it was so cool. Really felt like fantasy was being utilized. You know, you can create anything with fantasy and Nikki Palpretto was like, okay, I'm going to create this really cool, this really cool world, which I really liked. Uh, also, of course, I mean, the Stormlight Archive. I almost feel like it was unnecessary to even bring this up because it's like, uh, one, I'm, I mean, I'm a Cosmere fan, so uh, there's a lot of content uh, about the Cosmere already, and that's why I try every now and then to make videos that are like fantasy that's not Sanderson, because I try to balance it out a little, but oh, uh, store my archive and just any of the books basically in the Cosmere always just have such great settings. They really do feel like you're in a different world on a different planet and it feels like you're experiencing the powers alongside the characters. You're just like, why can't I be an Alamancer or why can't I be a Ferrochemist or whatever the case may be. You just want the powers, a wind runner. <laughs> why can't you have these powers, you know? And I just think everything about the world from the flora and the fauna to the way that they prepare their buildings for natural disasters and everything is just everything is so cool and so interesting innovative and it really feels immersive and then the last one i'll say is just a setting i like i i don't know that the world building itself is something that i'm like oh my gosh i just constantly eat it up it's not that, it's just literally the setting is cool and that would be queens of renthia pretty much every time i talk about a great setting i mention this book or if i mention this book i talk about how it's a great setting and it's a forest setting so you have people that live in these treetops and they have entire cities basically and towns and villages in the trees and they have a cool zip line system to traverse the land and i thought it was awesome it's premise if you don't know is that there are these spirits that want to protect the forest and in doing so, it leads them to be very hostile toward humans. So a magic user kind of has to hold the spirits in check, but it seems it's a tenuous hold because some of the spirits are escaping the magic and harming people. So that's a setup for Queens of Renthia, if you didn't know. Um, anyway, all three of those, if you're looking for fantasy with great settings, I think they do that very well. The next question says, Oz Hasari, or Asari. I'm sure I'm not going to say any of these Right. They're not real, so it's fine. Um, to heal is the the spell. And the question says, a book or series that healed you, gave you catharsis, or helped you escape when you needed it. So I have a few different ones. I think um, catharsis, I would say a couple of books that I actually picked up pretty recently would be Mame and The Crane Husband. 
This one follows a character who, she's a teenage girl, and her mother brings home this giant crane, and the crane is very clearly harming the mother, abusing the mother, and it is so much so a metaphor for domestic abuse and being in that situation and being a child in that situation and trying to go about your day-to-day -day life, but how all-consuming being in that kind of environment is. And so reading this, I was like, yeah, that's uh, pretty similar. <laughs> That's basically exactly what it's like. Um, so I think that I've never read anything that sort of captured that feeling that I experienced as a kid, that feeling of just like trying to hide and trying not to be seen and trying not to be noticed. And it, the person who's causing this sort of harm, it's uh, in this instance, they're a crane, but obviously <laughs> there was no giant crane in my childhood, but uh, the person almost doesn't feel like, you know, they're a person. And it's so it's hard to come to terms with like how, can you not see that you're so in need of help and the harm that you are causing all the rest of us? It's just, uh, I think that that book just captured it perfectly. It's not an easy read uh, by any means, but I think that it it certainly, I was like, yeah, um, it's hard to put into words what that feeling is like. And I feel like the author did that very well with that book. Um, Mame follows a character who is caring for her ill father and then throughout the book you're exploring grief and so much of what the character is experiencing especially being a young woman experiencing that i was like well tick 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 like all these check marks of like yeah that's that's what it's like and there's a number of moments that were very difficult to read but even though it's not a happy time, it's not cool. Like some of the fantasy books I was mentioning for the first question, it's still impactful. It makes you feel seen and less alone. And if you've not experienced those sorts of things, it can be very eye-opening. But on top of that, I thought that the characterization was fantastic and the character herself is very different than me as a person. So it's also kind of like, what would that experience that is similar to this fictional character and honestly more so like this author because this author experienced it's almost like auto fiction the author experienced a lot of this herself but it's like there's these other elements that of course make us unique and different and so what would it be like for somebody with those other complexities in their life to experience the same thing as what I've experienced with the loss of a loved one and being their caretaker when they're ill and seeing how different people experience grief I thought it was very well done very very tragic and very challenging to read and then <laughs> this one is more so it just helps in a time where I needed it. And that would be Spin the Dawn. I know this is not a lot of people's favorite. I thought it was very sweet and adventurous. And I like Elizabeth's rim, excuse me, Elizabeth Lim's writing quite a bit. There's just something about it that feels transportive, kind of like what it was talking about with the first question, but not because I feel like the worlds are so vivid necessarily or that the atmosphere is really unique. There's just something about her writing that I get, I find myself getting lost in. and. It's almost like romantic and whimsical at the same time, but there is this sort of sadness that lingers throughout the story. But I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was a lot of fun and it was just the right amount of everything that I needed at the time that I was picking it up because I remember really vividly my father being in the hospital one of many times that he went in the last few months of his life and picking that book up, can, like just not knowing what was going on because none of the doctors knew what was going on and trying to quell the uncertainty and the uneasiness and the worry because just that feeling is not doing anything but stressing you out where I got all my gray hairs, <laughs> white hairs. Um, so just being able to, to turn off those things even for just a little bit, it's not like they're entirely gone, but it's hard to do it on your own, but with stories, sometimes they're able to help you and I feel like that one definitely did. So it's always gonna hold a special place in my heart. <laughs> Uh, even if it's not like my all-time favorite story or anything like that. The next question though, um, Oz, whatever, Tresen, I don't know, to travel within a world, a book or series set in a world, uh, I can't talk apparently or read, which is ironic because that's what my whole channel is about. Um, a book or series set in our world and then in parentheses or a version of it. So I'm gonna say for this one, um, Spinning Silver. I love Spinning Silver. It's one of my favorite standalones. I think that it does such a great job of showing, and this is how I describe it pretty much every time I talk about it, the quiet ways that people can find power and agency in their own lives, especially when there's so many restrictions placed on them. And part of the restrictions, you do see a young woman who lives in an abusive 
home. And so you're seeing how she's kind of trying to find some independence despite that. You're also seeing a character who is very headstrong, but she's having to combat a lot of the prejudice against her family that comes as a result of them being Jewish. And I thought that with the way the author captured a lot of history and the way that people live off the land and things like that, it very much felt like I was back in that time, except for there's, of course, the fantasy elements, basically fae in the story, not the kind of fae that you find in Actar, which there's nothing wrong with those kind of fae. That's just not what you're getting really with this book. Um, but I think it's just historical fantasy done pretty much at its best. A lot of per perspectives and it doesn't tell you who you're with when you first start. So you're like, who is this again? And it takes you a second. That's the only, I guess, issue I have is that sometimes it's a little convoluted, but you catch on because she writes each character so distinctly. Also, um, this is a series, every time I mention it, I'm always like, oh, well, I need to read that series again. I've read the first one and never continued on, but that would be Temeraire. So this is an alternate um, history fantasy and it's looking at the Napoleonic Wars, but with dragons, if the dragons were essentially like the Air Force within, which, okay, obviously you didn't have like actual, like, you know, planes uh, during Na Napoleon's time, but you know what I'm saying? It's as if there was a branch of the military that was the Air Force, but instead of planes, they were dragons. And that concept is just so fun and so interesting and cool. And I did enjoy this first one. I just have yet to read on. The next question, Oz Steno to break a book or series that broke you or made you cry. So a lot of the ones I've already mentioned, I would say, fall into that camp. Um, but a couple of nonfiction books that I just was, oh my gosh, so many times throughout the books, I was like, oh my gosh, hold it in, <laughs> would be uh, The Girl with Seven Names. I'm going to get emotional talking about the scene that really was, I don't, like so much of it is so awful. It's about a girl who managed to escape uh, North Korea. And she, as you would expect from the title, has to kind of take on these different identities as she is trying to not only protect herself, but then try to get her family out of North Korea. And there's just a part where a random stranger just does this random act of kindness that is kind of a big deal, not just to the character. It's a big random act of kindness for somebody to be like, you know, I don't know you, but I'll do this. And there's something about how serendipitous it is and like the the goodness in this act that for this total stranger that I don't know, it just makes me so emotional. And even thinking about it makes me want to cry. And then Know My Name by Chanel Miller. Uh, this one is about somebody who was harmed and there was attempted harm uh, made on her. And she was... Uh, some people saw what was happening and they stopped it, but then it's her dealing with the effects of what happened and kind of the year of her life after and the way that she was kept anonymous, her identity, but the way the media just decided so many terrible things about her, despite the fact that she didn't do anything to anybody but exist and be something someone wanted to have for themselves in a way that was not legal, I'll say. And um, it's very heartbreaking to read the kind of effect that has on a person and the, the trauma that they have to not only deal with from that act, but then the way people talk about her and the way people talk about the situation is just devastating. Her, her, she narrates the audiobook, and when she reads her witness statement, I'm just like, gosh darn it, I don't know that I could read that book again without <laughs> sobbing. It's very good. So those two in particular, I would say. Um, I, they wouldn't break me, but you know, I mean, he even has broke in quotation marks. Uh, they were they were quite devastating, but also very inspiring at the same time. The next one, as Pirata to burn a book or series with a romance or spice that does it for you. Um, I don't know because I feel like spice. I understand that it's very subjective, um, but there's something that's kind of odd about being like I really liked the way I don't know I don't even. <laughs> I don't know if I even want to get into it, but I'll just say something that doesn't work for me, which is when they're really chatty during certain scenes. I'm like, can you just not? Like, just, you know, yeah. I don't know. I don't like when they're overly chatty. And I'm, I'm like, I suppose the author is trying to find a way to, like, fill the space with more than just, and then they touched them here, and this is what it felt like. And so and they're trying to, like, put in dialogue that's steamy. But it just, I don't like it. Um, but I, uh, I guess something that works is when they don't do that. I'm trying to think of a specific book. I'm going to just push off 
Uh, I'm just push aside the spice part and um, I'll talk about the romance. Um, because romance can be, you know, just like the relationship building and, and things like that. Whereas spice is more so, I feel like, specific to those kinds of scenes. But just romance, this isn't a book and I don't care. <laughs> but Final Fantasy 16, I love the two main characters so well the the main character in his love interest you could say and she's a pretty prominent character as well but i'm just like oh they're both so perfect i love them so much <laughs> i love them so much uh and so the whole time my husband or my husband i feel like is a little bit even more of a hopeless romantic than me when he's like when are these two gonna get together and i'm like it's gotta happen right because they're just like they're perfect um so with no shame i'm just gonna say final fantasy 16. i love them so much oh my gosh uh. And they're, like, they're so sweet with each other and they both are just awesome people and they're doing their best to help other people and they also have such cool moments, like individual moments, <laughs> that they're just awesome. They're awesome characters. So I guess that one. Uh, the next question, Oz, her, uh, whatever. I Once again, I have no idea how to say this. Herena, to give. A book or series you want to give to all of your friends and family. So I'm just going to say, I don't know if there's a single book I can think of that I would literally want to give to every single person because I'm like, oh, well, this person probably wouldn't like this because, and so it doesn't really count. So I'm going to zero in and say my nieces who are super cute and they're eight and 10, but one of them I think is about to turn 11. Anyway, I feel like they would love Spy Family. I really want them to read or watch Spy Family because I think they would love it. I mean, who do, who wouldn't? Spy Family is so fun and silly and such a good time. And I just think they would have a blast with it. I guess one of my nieces, um, she, she loves to read. And the other one gets kind of bored with books, but really likes, I think, comics and manga, I believe. Um, and she'll read sometimes, but I think she likes more of the, the visual. And so I just, I'm like, oh, it's perfect for both of them. <laughs> I think it would be so much fun. Um, and then the next question is, Oz to Saul, to confine a book or series you want to put in confinement. So something that you're like, I hated that book. And I don't feel too bad saying I hated this book because one, the author has got so much love for their stories. Um, the series is popular and lots of people like it. I, I don't feel like, oh, I'm going to deter people from picking it up if I say this. And also, I liked the writing and I loved the series until the end. And so that would be Ship of Destiny. I hated this book. I think that there aren't too many other books that made me angrier than this one. Just the more I would sit on it, the more I'm like, gosh, I would just always find myself being like, I hated that book. And as soon as I would be thinking about it, and as soon as I would think about talking to all of you about it, it would just rile me up. And all I would be doing is thinking in my head. It's not like I would be doing anything or talking about it. I would just get angry just sitting there <laughs> thinking about it. I would try to go to bed and be like, how am I going to talk about this book? And I just would, as I would sort of work through what I wanted to say about it, I'm like, I don't even want to talk about it. I just hated this stupid ending. And uh, part of it is because I loved the series so much. And then I hated that ending. And so now I don't like the series. So it's one of those situations when it, it would have been different if the whole series was kind of middle of the road. And then I picked that one up and I'm like, well, because eh. there's nothing to lose when you love the series thus far. It's like you've lost that because because of the rest of the series. That's what's so, because of that one book. Uh, I just really didn't like it. I'm not going to go into specifics as to why. There's just a number of things that happen that I'm like, no, uh, no. And it just kept happening. I'm like, all right, I'm done. So yeah, that one. But I'm happy for everybody else that really likes it. Anyway, last question. Oz Athera to grow a book or series that helped you grow or expand your mind. Uh, I'm going to list one more nonfiction, and that would be Evicted uh, by Matthew Desmond. And this is a book that goes through, as you would expect, the eviction process. And Matthew Desmond did a lot of intense research. He lived in the areas where people who were facing eviction or who had faced eviction before were, and he just kind of followed them around. Not in like a way, he wasn't stalking people. He had their permission. He would just kind of like live near them and go with them to the store, or go with them looking for an apartment. And he got their permission to record their conversations. And he changed people's names, but he pretty much kept the conversations exactly as they were recorded. And it feels like you're watching a documentary. It really opened my eyes. And I think a lot of people's, I mean, it won a Pulitzer. So I think it's, um, it's eye-opening to a lot of people 
just how difficult it is when somebody faces hard times and they don't have the maybe they they don't have family members that can help them they don't have loved ones friends who are nearby they don't have um you know accumulated wealth some families even if you don't have a lot of people in your life somebody likely is is living somewhere nearby or something and they just don't have anybody in their life to help them and something as simple as one woman at one point finally got a job somewhere and she was driving to her job and she was starting to get on her feet and she was with somebody who was not kind to her children and so she really wanted to get out of that situation but she didn't have enough money and a lot of places even though they're not supposed to keep you from living there if you have children they do and so she was limited to even where she could stay so she wanted to try to get some independence and save so she could get her children um and herself away from this man and um she got a job but then her car had car trouble and she didn't have the money to get it fixed right away so she lost her job and then she's like right back at um zero basically starting over again and just situations like that where when that happens you're like well what do you do <laughs> because and that's one example of many because he shadows a lot of different people and they're all facing such difficult circumstances and he doesn't shy away from showing when they sometimes they're human beings and they make mistakes or they're foolhardy with how they use the money that they do get or something like that but it's not something where you read it and at least i didn't it's not like i was passing judgment on these people it's just recognizing like oh my gosh these these people it sucks to be in these situations and living in just the places they would live in because people take advantage when somebody is in need of a place to stay a uh, need they need shelter usually for their kids usually they're willing to put up with whatever so long as their kids can be kept off the street and people take advantage and they they don't fix the place up they don't care that there's like no oven or no fridge or anything anyway i'm going on and on and on about this book but I just think it really highlighted how messed up the system is when it comes to um, the eviction process. And I actually, I know he's written another thing that I really want to read. But on top of that, um, I actually want to look into to see if there have been changes made as a result of, um, maybe not as a result of this book, but just the issues that were, a light was being shined on them. I'd be curious to see if things are different now because they were not good, at least in these areas. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Anyway, that's it for this book tag. I do have a playlist where all the videos that we've been doing, myself and the other hosts, um, that are shades themed, be Schwab themed, those sorts of things, uh, where you can find those. So if you're interested in checking those out, I'll have that playlist linked. I'll have Roger's original video in the description bar down below. If you would like to answer any of these questions, feel free to do so. But thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.